In this video, I want to talk about the so-called quotient rule for derivatives, because the derivative of the quotient is a little bit more complicated than that of a product. So the formula is going to look like the following. If f and g are differentiable functions and g of x does not go to zero at the point we're interested in, because uh, division by zero, of course, would throw everything out the window there. And with those assumptions, the derivative of f divided by g, so f divided by g prime, is going to look like g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x divided by g of x squared. So we're going to take the bottom function and we square it here in the denominator. There are some important things to pay attention to here. The original uh, function was a quotient of two other functions. The derivative will likewise be a quotient as well. The function that was on the bottom is going to be in the bottom squared. We're not taking the derivative there. It's just g of x squared. So as you square the original one, that usually is pretty easy to remember. The part that you have to watch out for when it comes to the quotient rule is this minus sign right here. There's a subtraction going on. And when you look at the numerator, it's like I got g of x times f prime of x times f of x times g prime of x. And so when you look at that expression, the f the, excuse me, the g f prime minus f g prime, that looks a lot like the product rule we saw before. It's like, okay, I got it. You got one factor times the derivative of the other, and then you have that other one times the derivative of the other. That's similar, but unlike the product rule, because sums and products are commutative, you can mix things up and it doesn't really matter too much. With the quotient rule, it's going to be a big deal. If you move this minus sign, that'll give you the wrong derivative. So who do we take the derivative of first and who do we take the derivative of second? We have to pay attention to that. Well, one way of remembering it is whoever was on top, the numerator, you're going to take the derivative of it first. And then who's on the denominator, you take the derivative of that. So there is sort of like an order to it. Like the top has a higher priority, so you take its derivative first. That's one way of remembering it. Another way is to think of the following poem. Because honestly, for me, uh, I mix these things up all the time. Even as a, even after teaching calculus for many, many years, I still remember the nice little poem I learned uh, when I took my first uh, calculus course. So if we write things a little bit differently, right? So we're going to write this as g of x. And then instead of, saying, instead of saying f prime, I'm going to say dx of f of x there. So d stands for derivative here. So we take g of x df, and we're going to take f dg. That's going to do where the denominator stays the same. Why make that modification? Because then with that modification, you get the following little uh, couplet. It's a poem for which we're going to say low d high minus high d low, square the bottom, and here we go. So you, you, you can leave once you have that correctly. So what does that mean, low d high? So the function on the bottom is clearly the lower one. The one on the top is the higher one. So we read that as low d high. So you're going to take the denominator function times the derivative of the numerator, so low d high, minus, that's fairly straightforward, and then you're going to end up with high d low, so you take the top, the numerator function times the derivative of the denominator function. So that gets you the correct order you want. Low d high minus high d low. And then square the bottom. Here we go. You need to square the bottom. Why do we say here we go? Well, it rhymes with low. So we make sure we get things in the correct order. So say it one more time. Low d high minus high d low. Square the bottom. Here we go. If you remember this poem, then you'll remember the quotient rule. That'll be very helpful to you. Uh, in the future when you have to do this. Now, if you're like me, you can put this uh, you can put this poem to a song, to music if you prefer. Me personally, I think like the the square kind of makes me think of a square dance. So it's kind of like low dee high, high dee high dee low, square at the bottom, here we go. You can of course choose whatever tune is appropriate for you to remember it. And so this is a very common poem to help people remember the quotient rule. Um, less common is the second verse to this to this song here, uh, which goes something like the following. High D low minus low D high, square the bottom, now you die. So you, you, you want to remember that one because the thing is if you mix up the first line, that mixes messes things up. That's the part that we have to look out for. So you have to make sure that low rhymes with go. On the other hand, high rhymes with die. So if you end with low D high, then you're going to die. Uh, that's the, long, the, the wrong quotient rule there. So unlike the product rule, I'm not going to actually prove the quotient rule at this moment. It turns out that when we equip the product rule with the chain rule, we actually can prove the quotient rule quite easily. Uh, and so to avoid a cumbersome proof, we're going to do that later. So in, right now what I want to do is actually apply the quotient rule to compute the derivative of the rational function 2x minus 1 over 4x plus 3. So the high function, of course, is going to be 2x plus minus 1. The low function is going to be 4x plus 3. So if we want to compute the derivative of f of x, think of the poem here. We're going to get low d high 
minus high d low square the bottom here we go we always have to do the second half of the poem so we know that we are doing the right one so it needs to rhyme correctly without death of course so now we've put everything together now we're going to try to compute some derivatives for which the derivatives are going to be simple enough with these ones the derivative of 2x minus 1 by rules we've already seen would be 2 the derivative of 4x plus 3 is just going to be 4. The derivative of a linear function is just its slope. This then sits above the 4x plus 3 squared. So the mistake that students make the most often when they use the quotient rule is they mix up the quotient rule. The negative sign gets in the wrong spot. If you remember the poem, that solves all of your problems. The other thing I have to caution you about is when you look at something like this, temptation comes upon many a students at this moment where they're like, ooh, I have a 4x plus 3. Oh, I have a 4x plus 3. I can cancel them out. And I've simplified it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. No, 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 no. That's not right at all. Uh, notice if I did something like the following. If I take 2 plus 3 over 2, the temptation's like, I'm going to cancel out the 2. I'm going to cancel out the 2. This is equal to 3 or 1 plus 3, which equals 4 or something like that. Neither of those is correct. Notice, of course, 2 plus 3 is 5 over 2 is it would be five halves or 2.5. Notice 2.5 is neither three nor four. You can't cancel terms across the fraction bar. You can only cancel common divisors. So if you had something like three times three plus two all over three, then by all means, cancel the three. That's okay. A common divisor can cancel on top and bottom, but not just a common term. You can't just combine like terms like you can with addition. So the temptation to cancel the 4x plus 3 right here is going to be very tempting. Do not do it. That's not an acceptable cancellation. Because after all, if we could, if we could cancel something like that, think of the quotient rule formula, f of x times, excuse me, g of x times f of x prime minus f of x times g prime of x all over g of x. If you could always unilaterally just cancel out that g right there, why would we not just do it right here in the formula, have a simpler formula? Why would we use a formula that always simplifies? Uh, because it doesn't. Uh, so watch out for those things. Okay, that's, that's, that's a very common mistake with these types of things. So what we're gonna do instead, you know, we're gonna do what I like to, what I like to call the right way, uh, is we're gonna distribute this two, we're gonna distribute this four, so that we can combine like terms in the numerator. We're gonna get an eight x plus six, then we're gonna get a minus here, an 8x minus four. Do make sure that minus sign distributes onto all of the pieces in the second part, right? This negative sign is inclusive here. So you're gonna see that there's an 8x minus an 8x. They're gonna cancel each other out and that'll leave behind a six from the first one. And then you're gonna get a negative, negative four. So that's actually a positive four. That combines to give us a 10 over 4x plus 3 squared, which is then the derivative of this function using the quotient rule that we just learned about. With one last example, let's find the equation of the tangent line to the curve given as y equals e to the x over 1 plus x squared. And we want to find this tangent line at the point 1 comma e over 2. You'll notice that if we take the x coordinate to equal 1, we're going to end up with e to the first over 1 plus 1 squared. 1 plus 1 squared, of course, is 2, so we end up with e over 2. So that's the point that they're given right there. Now recall that to find the equation of the tangent line, we have to use the formula y minus f of a is equal to f prime at a times x minus a, where in this case our function is f of x right here, right? So the a coordinate that that value is given us, a here is going to equal 1. So we can plug that into the formula and go with it there. We're going to get an x minus 1, like so. And f of 1 which is what we would be computing over here, is already been computed for us as well. That's going to be this e over 2 that we need to compute. So what's left for us mysterious still is the f prime at 1. So we need to compute what that is. That's going to be our goal at the moment. So let's compute the derivative of the function f using uh, the quotient rule, because it is a quotient of functions going on here, right? We have this f of x equals e to the x over 1 plus x squared. Uh, the the, the quotient rule is necessary for the derivative here. So we'll compute it using our poem here. Uh, so we get low d high minus high d low square the bottom. Here we go. And so we're going to take 1 plus x squared and we're going to square the entire thing, which really we're going to leave it factored. So it won't be too much of a consequence for us here. 
Uh, so recall that when you take the derivative of an e to the x, it's equal to its own derivative. So the derivative will be itself e to the x. So we get 1 plus x squared times e to the x. Then we're going to subtract from that e to the x times, well, we take the derivative of 1 plus x squared. The derivative of a constant is going to be 0, so it'll just disappear. And the derivative of x squared is going to be a 2x, like so. This all sits above the 1 plus x squared quantity squared right there. For which, if we wanted to, we could simplify this a little bit more. Uh, notice that there's this common factor of e to the x. I'm going to factor that thing out of this expression. And so we end up with e to the x uh, multiplied by 1 minus 2x plus x squared. This sits above 1 plus x squared quantity squared. And it turns out 1 minus 2x plus x squared, that actually does factor. That's going to factor as a 1 minus x quantity squared, so e to the x times 1 minus x squared all over 1 plus x squared quantity squared. So we can't really uh, we can't really simplify the fraction any more than it is, but this would give us the correct derivative. Now our goal is not to find the derivative per se. We're trying to find the tangent line, which we need to know a specific slope. So we found the derivative dy over dx, but we need to evaluate it at the value x equals 1. Or in other words, we're looking for f prime at 1, like we said a moment ago. In which case, if we plug in x equals 1 into our function here, we'd end up with e to the first times 1 minus 1 uh, squared all over 1 plus 1 squared squared, for which we simplify this. We end up with e times 0 over... Uh, we're going to get a 2 squared, which this is all just going to equal 0. This tells us that the slope of the tangent line here is 0. It turns out when x equals 1, we have now obtained a horizontal tangent line. So let's erase this and insert our slope of 0 right there. Well, anything times 0 is going to give us 0. So we have a y minus e over 2 is equal to 0. To solve for y, to put it in slope-intercept form, we're going to add e halves to both sides of the equation. And we end up with the equation of the tangent line will just be y equals e over 2. And again, we see that this is a horizontal tangent line because it has the form y equals some constant.